Hello and welcome to the big picture. In what is being termed as an almost unprecedented display of fast justice delivery, the accused in the dastardly December 16th gang rape case in Delhi have been convicted and waiting to be sentenced. The entire case from the shocking occurrence in a Delhi bus to the conviction has taken just nine months amid much media and public pressure. Though this has been brought great, this has brought great relief and even a lot of approbation for the speed in investigation and prosecution. Ironically, many questions stare at us following this. The major one being, can we hope that similar fast track justice is provided to all the thousands of rape victims, if not other crimes across the country? Statistics indicate that a rape case takes an average of five years to be completed, if not more. Thousands of rape, rape victims across the country especially in rural and semi-urban areas, languish unheard and in constant fear of the perpetrators of the crime on them, who more often roam around freely. While the Delhi gang rape case has come to a fusion, it can only be a small victory and much more needs to be done. Today we will discuss how and whether we can expect similar fast justice in future. To discuss this, I have with me Justice R.S. Sodi, retired Delhi High Court judge, Shailja Chandra, former Chief Secretary of the Government of Delhi, Kirti Singh, Supreme Court Advocate, and Pamela Filippos, Director of Women's Feature Service. Welcome to all of you. Justice Sodi, I would like to come to you first. This seems to be seen as a, you know, great victory for the judiciary in this country. After a long time, it is, you know, there's something which has happened, which, which everybody is very appreciative of. Is this something which we can expect in future also? And, and if not, why? Um, is that a question to me? Yes, this is a question to you, Justice Sodi. Uh, ah, ah, oh yeah. Uh, you know, actually, uh, this nine-month period that has happened yes. is, is indeed uh, 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 something we should we should uh, be, be happy about. Right. But I feel that nine months is actually too much, and we can uh, we, we can actually reduce it further. What has happened in this case is that the, that the court gave two hours a day to the, to, to, for this case. That is not correct. When a session trial, when, the, when a session trial proceeds, the trial proceeds from 10 o'clock to 4 o'clock. And, and given that much time, this could, can conclude within, within about a, a month at the highest of two months. Justice Sodi, you know, I, mean, I, I think uh, you're being very optimistic about this and, you know, such optimism is welcome actually in such situations. But the fact <laughs> of the matter is, these fast track courts all, don't, don't take up only one case, there are several cases pending there. How do we expect them to take up these kind of cases throughout the day? No, no, no. No, have, see, prior to the earlier amendments, if you, if you, if you remember, whenever there was a session trial, a session trial began and fixed days were given and within those days the trial was over. It is only later on that an amendment came in the, in the CRPC where adjournments were, were allowed uh, uh, and cases could go from one judge to another, things like that. Right. Earlier there was no such thing and, the, and a session trial, once it began, it was fixed days and within those fixed days, one case at a time was taken up and finished. Okay. The, the, you can't have 10 cases going on at the same time. No, no, no. That is a... Uh, that, that, that is where, 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 where the problem lies. Okay, I mean, that, it's interesting that uh, you, you are saying that. Let me go to Shalaja Chandra. Shalaja Chandra, you know, this is, this is a case which has had, you know, international media attention. It, it has had huge public response. So we see this kind of, you know, which, which Justice Sodi incidentally thinks that it is not as fast as, as he thinks it should be. But, you know, this is fast enough for us. If, even if, if, if other cases can, can be done in this, in, in, in such a short time, I'm sure there, there'll be a lot of, uh, you know, relief among the people. Shailaja Chandra, this question is to you. I'm sorry, your last few words were lost. I didn't hear what you said. No, no I, just, I just said that, you know, this is, this, is a, this is a case which has taken nine months. Justice Sodi says that it, it could have been done earlier also. But do you think that, you know, even nine months is something which we can do with? 
Yes, I think even if nine months becomes a benchmark, it would be one of the most far-reaching things to happen in this country. I don't think nine months is feasible because in this case they had a battery of investigating officers. They also had day-to-day, -day, you might say, quick hearings and I think adjournments were just not allowed. We know how our systems uh, operate. We know how many adjournments are given all the time. But I think the fact that there is a Nirbhaya judgment which came in nine months, every time there is any kind of a monitoring or oversight, this would be the benchmark in future. And every time five years and six go, people will say Nirbhaya could be done in nine months. What about this case? I know that I had the, uh, I would say, good fortune of working in the judiciary because in those days uh, judicial magistrates came from the executive because it, it had not been separated in Delhi. And I remember how closely we were monitored about the kind of warrant cases that we were able to dispose of. This, I think, would be one of the ways in which one would go back because the fact that something so important could be done in nine months would stand as a milestone and nobody would be able to say no, but there were adjournments, there was this problem, there was that problem. I also feel that judges, with due respect, would be very circumspect about giving adjournments, which lawyers ask for at the drop of a hat and usually get those adjournments, even on per personal grounds and some other grounds. Right. I think now people would be aware that this cannot be done. And I, I, I'm certain that nine months is in something absolutely impossible, but it is a benchmark. And we can strive and persuade the government to give more um, courts, give more fast-track courts, more investigating officers. Then only can the time period really reduce. Okay. Anyway, the government has announced that it is going to set up 1,800 fast-track courts. Let me come to Kirti Singh. Kirti Singh. You think this is going to put pressure on, as Shalja Chandra was talking about, you think this is going to put pressure on the lawyers who are seen as culprits sometimes for, for the delay in de the delivery of justice? Well, certainly, and I think they are because they ask for frequent adjournments, especially if they are acting on behalf of a powerful defendant. And I think that uh, uh, the court uh, should be instructed not to give adjournments uh, on, uh, on a variety of reasons. Uh, I, th this would be the single most important feature, and we had suggested amendments to the CRPC again saying that no adjournment should be given and that these particular cases should be decided within a period of uh, three months and the investigation should be completed within a month. So this can be done. We have seen how the investigation was done in this case. We have seen that uh, uh, all the bits of uh, evidence that had to be collected was collected and that's how they were able to match DNA, DNA samples. They were able to um, uh, do the forensic tests properly. They got the dying declarations recorded properly. They, uh, exa the court examined 84 witnesses and, um, and gave a judgment. But uh, I am afraid I'm very pessimistic about uh, the future because there are several cases pending right now right. which are taking a long time uh, and will continue to take a long time if we have to, uh, you know, to get uh, justice. And this is because, I mean, it starts from the investigation onwards and, you know, uh, goes on uh, in the court because even the investigation takes so long. And this is why women's group have been demanding really implementation of the law. And they have been saying that unless we implement the law, the law remains a dead letter. And when I talk of implementation, I'm talking of the entire criminal justice system, not just the courts. Because Absolutely. it's important that the police follow procedures, especially in cases, and we have a number of such cases of influential uh, people pending in cases in which, you know, there are influential people yeah, involved and, uh, and, who and, can and, obstruct 
the course of justice yes. and uh, who can uh, you know pay their lawyers well and take any amount of adjournments we need to therefore build up a, a system where the prosecution will be equally effective where the police will investigate and i think there have been several judgments of the court you know which say make the police stronger delink the police from okay. the uh, political bosses and from the executive okay, the, the the Singh. Prakash Singh yes, case, for instance and we really need to do a uh, you know take a slew of measures sure, which sure. we can discuss yeah. later okay uh, pamela you know, all this is very optimistic. What Justice Sodhi says is very optimistic and you know, all these things are fine. But the fact of the matter remains that this is an isolated case. This is not something which we can expect to happen. But as Chalja Chandra says, if this can become a benchmark, we, can, we should still be happy. Yeah, but the point is, I think one of the most important issues that have emerged is that we haven't invested in justice delivery sufficiently in the criminal justice system as a whole, as Kirti has just pointed out. And it required the extraordinary uh, mobilization on the streets. Absolutely. The extraordinary pressure put on the government, on the system, on the police to get the kind of response that we have got today. So nine months, yes. And this is not good. going to happen in every case. Yes, but what, we, what do we do? We have 23,000 rape cases pending. Right. What do we do about them? And that is the question that I think we have to address. And here, I think we have to go back and look at the system, the justice delivery system, and whether we need to shore it up in various ways. Apart from, of course, the various vested interests that manipulate it for their various... No, the, 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 when, no, when uh, Kirti, Kirti Singh also was talking about it, you know, when we, when we talk of rape cases and things like that, the fact of the matter is we are told, you know, four in ten cases are, are actually... Uh, they, you know, get registered in the police stations. That's right. That's where the problem starts. That's right. And there isn't that investment of energy, time and money in these issues. And also, and also Pamela, the, the problem of the police, the police itself not taking cognizance of such offenses or, you know, having their own very uh, medieval views on these kind of issues. Right. I think what has happened is that this case has shaken up the system. And the results that we see today are precisely because of that. But to replicate it across the country for all the cases involved would need a change of mindset, not in the sense that the word mindset is used. It means a change of governance. It means a change of the way democracy is imagined in this country. Okay, uh, Justice Sodi, you think you know this? This has really shaken up the people. This this case shook up the people. Now the b recent Bombay instance also has has. I mean, it, it, it's not comparable to the, the to the kind of uh, attention which the Delhi case got. But all this, you think that you know, it, we, are we on the way towards what uh, Pamela says is you know complete change of mindset? How where do we start? Or uh, you think it has started? You know, I, I, I have always been of the opinion that uh, the, the, uh, the change has already started. Especially after this case, of course, it, is, it has uh, accelerated. Uh, see, now look, look what happened. It, it traumatized the legislature. It, it, it woke up the judiciary from its slumber. Right. And sensitized the police. To whatever extent, it's a beginning. And it's a good beginning. And I'm, I'm happy it is there. Now, you see, as far as the courts are concerned, Investigation in itself may take uh, three months, two months, one month. That depends upon the size of the case. But once the case comes up for a trial, see, in a trial, there's no question of lengthening it. You have to set down trial in a time frame. Trial will mean each trial will be given, say, 10 days, depending upon what it is. Those 10 days are set with, with consultation of the lawyers, but they're set. In those 10 days, every, the evidence has to be completed. That's it. And it can be done. It used to be done earlier. It, 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 it is just, we become so lethargic now. We talk of adjournment and not adjournment. There was no question of an adjournment in the session case. Who heard of one? When I was a child, it did occur. But now, of course, no, but there, but Justice Sodi, we but must wake up. Sorry, we must take our uh, sorry, delivery system more seriously. Sorry, just, Justice Sodi, is it, is, it, is it a case of each judge, you know, according to his ability or according to his sensitivity? Is that is that the problem, or you know, you, you, why why does 
some cases happen no, no, fast no, no, and no. some cases doesn't no. happen. <coughs> see, uh, see, you've got to manage your, your briefs. It's a question of, of docket, uh, docket management. Uh, yes, we are underpowered and we need a lot more manpower. That, that has to be taken care of. The government must uh, address that immediately. You must, must ensure that every court or, uh, works to its full strength. You cannot have, have, uh, <clears throat> can't overburden a judge and then expect him to, you know, uh, you know, uh, ch churn out a case so fast. But I am on the issue that once a case starts, there is no question of any, any hiatus in between. It begins and it ends. How do the we ensure? How, how, how is you it can't ensure? have this system of 20 cases listed no, today. Justice Sodi, sorry, how is it, how can we ensure that? Docket is management. The, is there is there any you know is there any pressure on the judges Docket management. from the higher 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 uh, higher ups of them? Who, is there some 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 sort of monitoring of what how these cases are taken up and how they are being disposed of? Is no. there a proper monitoring system at all? It is merely be no 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 we are under uh, we are we are absolutely overburdened, but. The, because we are overburdened, we have got into this uh, system of, of postponing everything. But this, this has to stop. You know, you have to, you have to have a system of docket management. A case, once it is ready, comes into court. It, it comes into court only if it is ready. Once it comes into court, there is no question of that case not uh, we get adjourned. The question doesn't arise. It has to finish. It is, it, it is, it is happening all over the world. I don't know why we are, we are, we are fighting shy of, of, uh, adopting systems. This, is, this happens everywhere in the world. Okay. That a case begins and case finishes. There okay. are no in-betweens. Okay. Uh, Kirti Singh, why does it happen? You know, Justice Sodi, yes. Justice Sodi's solution to these things look you know, sounds sounds very rational and simple, but why is it that it doesn't happen? And you know, ha, ha, has the has complacency set in to such an extent that they have become completely insensitive to the needs of the people who are seeking justice? Yeah, it partly happens because of the reasons that Justice Sodi has said that uh, you know there are too many cases and uh, the court then gives adjournments because the load is so heavy but also i think uh, it's because even the courts are not prioritizing these uh, cases they are not uh, and uh, his solution is a good one that one case should be heard at a time and uh, and uh, the, so the law can be changed plus uh, the uh, high court which is supposed to administer the lower courts should become far stricter exactly. at, and and you know monitor the cases uh, better is and there I a think monitoring? also that the, Kirti, uh, Kirti you know Singh, incentive sorry. should be given sorry uh, sorry to interrupt but do, do you think there is, there is some sort of mo yes. monitoring yes yes there is some sort of monitoring but i don't think it's it's uh, good enough because of you know routinely there's a case i heard from lucknow in which it has taken eight years for a for a person's age to be decided whether he was a minor or not right. and this was a it's a famous sexual harassment Hashi, asiana case and those people everybody is going mad the the girl's parents are totally traumatized the girl is traumatized because the accused being an influential person can keep on postponing the case and in Edwa we have a lot of such cases which come. Right. So you know what is happening is that actually the courts are not sensitive that they, sections of the judiciary I'm afraid I'll have to say are as gender insensitive and as patriarchal Absolutely. as sections outside. So uh, one, one more thing that will have to be done is intensive uh, and extensive gender sensitization um, to, to actually tell them plus specific directions that cases should be handled in this way and this can be reorganized you know um, and, and I hope they sort of think about doing this also okay. when you set up fast track case the courts they, they should be directed to finish the case within a particular period of a time. time frame needs uh, to be time frame otherwise needs to it be, will not okay. happen okay uh, yeah okay, okay. 
Uh, shall we just yeah, uh, no adjournments as as uh, for any reason whatsoever. Okay, okay. Shall we just Chandra? We have been we are discussing about you know how to handle these kind of cases, but you know as far as as far as this 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 crime is concerned, this is a crime which is a which the society needs to take responsibility for what what happens more than you know we we are talking of after the crime happens what is what needs to be done, but how do we prevent this? No, are 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 there? Are, have have we have we given enough attention to how to prevent these kind of crimes at all? We have not given any attention to this. I mean, we have progressed a little in the last few years. That Eve teasing, the old name Eve teasing, which was laughed at, is now really looked at seriously when you talk of stalking and molestation and all that. But. The number of cases being filed is many more, so there is an expectation that the law will take its course. But I do feel that, as other countries have done, you do need bodies, maybe with women uh, activists on it, to constantly monitor the progress of cases in court, bring out before the media the delays that are taking place. A lot of frivolous cases, frivolous applications are made in going to the High Court and the Supreme Court only to delay. And it's only when extremely, uh, I would say, strong strictures are passed that the lawyers eat humble pie and stop doing this. But they are constantly guiding the client to go uh, in appeal just to delay. Now, I do feel this kind of in between when the case is going on, on one pretext or the other, they run to the High Court. Definitely, there is a need for a central as well as state level bodies which are responsible for monitoring and prevention, meaning you know very well that the age group of 14 to 24 are the ones who are really responsible for almost 60% of the cases. I'm right. not talking about incest and things within the house and rape within the house. That is a different thing altogether. Yes. But in the open, it is these youngsters. Now, keeping a tab not on the whole population, but on those who are taking to alcohol, drugs, and the fact that they are going to just burn out after 18 hours of work, they are going to get their energies and get indulgent perverse activities. It is well known. The police know very well who these youngsters are. You need them to be counseled, to be put into something useful, to be done with their time, to be able to divert their attention into sports or something like that. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to prevent what's happening because the amount of perversion that exists is phenomenal. Absolutely. I'm told by police people that young people are working 18 hours a day and then they just take a swig of alcohol, it goes to the head and then in a pack they just do these things. We have right. to anticipate that. Absolutely. Pamela, I mean, these, these are issues which, which needs to be discussed. You know, we have talking of any number of having tougher laws and things like that. How do we prevent these things? If you look at the if you look at the profile of these five five accused and also the juvenile, the sixth one, you see from where they come from, what is their background, what is it that they can look forward to in their life. Even this is where the problem lies. Have we are we giving enough attention to that at all? Absolutely, I wouldn't dispute that. And I think in a sense what is happening is crime is reflective of social conditions right. in ways that are very, very eloquent. And which also tell you that um, the reasons for them are very complex and that there are no quick fix solutions. This uh, call for capital punishment, for instance, is... So this capital, is, capital punishment is not a solution to this kind of Absolutely not. So it needs a lot of thinking. And this is where I think we, we have done, uh, we have come a long way. I think with Justice Verma Committee report Absolutely. is a very important starting point. It and Justice Verma's report says that capital punishment should not be given in this Absolutely. case. Absolutely. And it also recognizes the continuum of violence. Right including armed forces, the uh, violence Absolutely. perpetrated by armed forces, the violence perpetrated against Dalits, against the minorities. These are issues that have to come on the table because if you want justice to work, then you have to really ensure that that first FIR gets filed. And very often that doesn't happen. Right. And that's the point that Justice Varma tried to put on the table. But as far as as far as prevention is concerned, as far as gender sensitization is concerned, how do 
young young youngsters deal with people of the opposite sex is something which which has very low level of uh, importance in, in in our system in our educational system or even in uh, and other it's systems. so simple it all emanates from the constitution yes the right of free movement of every person man or woman the right to bodily integrity of man or woman these are things that should have been part of the, the air we breathe the education we impart and in a sense we have lost that vision somewhere along the way i think i think we have to get back to it and we're going to see more and more crime unless we we actually ask ourselves these tough questions yeah justice sodi where does the justice system uh, figure in, in in you know in in the prevention of such crimes it cannot see the justice system as a, as it is it, it, it never says don't do a particular thing exactly it only tells you if you do yes. this will this will be the result yeah so i mean <laughs> there's no question of preventing it in that fashion that is the the, the social order has to do that social order your, has your, to do your, that your, and your it does not education your teachers your, your parents your brothers sisters shalaja chandra sorry shalaja chandra what you know that is the question which we, we need to ask the governments how how far the governments the systems have concentrated on gender sensitization you know at the school level at you know even even among you know uneducated illiterate, illiterate thousands of people out there in the streets you know having having no possible future for themselves how do we you know we have to tackle their minds you know i would say about 7 8 years ago when hiv aids was very much an issue right the curriculum the entire uh, cbsc schedules they had this whole thing on adult you know teaching yourself about your body not the uh, organs but exactly how to deal with the opposite sex both sides and right. communication negotiation somehow the other there was a parliamentary committee which thought that this was culturally unacceptable because some of the things they taught were a little too explicit okay. as a result of that this was completely taken off the agenda i think we have to have a balanced approach some of this sexual education and also how to respect the opposite sex how to deal with them was very much part of what was being taught it needs to be revived we don't need to have very explicit images and explicit kind of you might say teacher student where the teacher gets so embarrassed to be teaching something right the whole world i mean in the western countries have begun doing it years ago we can certainly do it but there has to be a balanced approach we cannot keep on hammering this culture and indian culture doesn't accept this because that argument is sometimes completely wailing the main issue that boys and girls must know that they belong to two different sexes but each has to respect the other in in a western kind of um, you might say schools and which are there in delhi west i mean western what i mean is the slightly high fi schools the liberal the liberal education i was told education. by one of the teachers that boys yeah the liberal yes i mean i'm saying where it's all english medium children were allowed to sit next to each other and hold hands boys and girls but many people parents said this is unacceptable we will not have our ch children sitting and holding hands well we seem to have some sort of a great division in our society on what is the right thing to do and the wrong thing to do i think that government needs to have lot more discussions on what is acceptable and then to take it forward in a very single minded way otherwise okay. this uncouth and brazen and completely perverse behavior will take us over completely absolutely absolutely Pam pamela last words to you. where where does the me media figure in all these things i think the media has a very important role to play not in you know sort of drumming up uh, a sensation which very often happens but in actually coming up with uh, with uh, sort of intrinsic responses and also um, looking at how we can put out solutions to society in general i think it's important to put many patriarchal institutions under the scanner Absolutely. including marriage okay. uh, that's where the inequality that's, that's, yeah the, and that's where a lot of problem country. lies also yes kirti very quickly last words to you 
Yeah, I want to say that apart from all the solutions that people have suggested, there are certain practical things that can be done, quickly, and quickly. which we have been urging, for instance, in Delhi, about uh, police patrolling, about uh, you know seeing that cities are made safer by adopting a number of means, ad uh, adopting means not only in the cities but in the rural areas okay. also, because this is not being done. If uh, uh, okay. on a lonely stretch of Vasant Kunj, a girl can get uh, you know uh, murdered, the then it's police, not the being police done. Police patrolling so system, the beat we, system police, has taken a beating actually. Uh, I, oh, I'm completely run out of time. Sorry, Kirti, completely run yes. out of time. They, you know, I agree with you. The beat system, yes. the police beat system could control a lot of things which, which happens, but that seems to have taken a major beating in this country for quite some time now. Anyway, the, you know, we can only hope that things will change, but as, as Justice Sodi said right at the beginning, we see some changes taking place in the system. Hopefully, it will be fast enough to see some changes really happening on the ground. Thanks to all my guests. Justice Sodi, Shailaja Chandra, Kirti Singh and Pamela Filippos. Please keep watching. We'll come back with another issue on the big picture same time tomorrow.